Let me share with you two of the best sources of information available. First, as we have mentioned, learn from your own experiences. Become a good student of your own life. It's the information you are most familiar with and feel the strongest about. So make your own life one of your most important studies. And in studying your own life, be sure to study the negative as well as the positive, your failures as well as your successes. Our so-called failures serve us well when they teach us valuable information. They're frequently better teachers than our successes. One of the ways we learn how to do something right is simply by doing it wrong. Doing it wrong is a great school for learning. Now I would suggest that you not take too long. If you've done it wrong for ten years, I wouldn't suggest another ten. But what a close at hand and emotionally impactful way to learn from your own experiences. When I met Mr. Schoff, I had been working six years. I started when I was 19, and when I met him, I was 25. He said to me, Mr. Rohn, you have been working now for six years. How are you doing? I said, not very well. He said, then I suggest you not do that anymore. Six years is long enough to operate the wrong plan. Next he asked, how much money have you saved in the last six years? I said, not any. He said, who sold you on that plan six years ago? What a fantastic question. Where did I get my present plan that wasn't working well? Hey, everyone has bought someone's plan. The question is, whose? Whose plan have you bought? Now, those initial confrontations as you come to grips with your own past experiences may be a little painful at first, especially if you have made as many errors as I did. But think of the progress you can make when you have finally confronted those errors by becoming a better student of your own life. Now, the next way to learn is from other people's experiences. And remember, you can learn from other people whether they have done it right or wrong. You can learn from negative as well as positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories on both sides of the ledger. One list of human stories is called examples, do what these people did. And the other list of human stories is called warnings, don't do what these clods did. What a wealth of information what to do and what not to do. I think it also means, however, that if your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. There are three ways to learn from other people. The first is to listen to the cassettes and read the books by and about people who've accomplished great things. All the successful people I know and work with around the world are good readers. They just read, read, read. They are so curious that they are driven to read because they just have to know. It is one of the things they all have in common. Here's a good phrase. All leaders are readers. And they use cassette programs too, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Cassettes can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and new skills. In order to take the next step to where you want to be, you've got to be willing to take a stand for yourself, within yourself. Speak up for yourself. Ask for the things that you want. And be willing, be willing, be willing for some people to say no. Everybody's not going to say no. You know, people's job is not to make you happy. I know that would be wonderful if this were Iyamlaville and all of you were Iyamlaites and I could just be happy, you know? So, but that's not it. So you, you, you've got to be willing to do that. Take that next step towards standing up for yourself. So th those things that are unconscious and habitual will begin to fade away. You've got to challenge that. Everyone has different goals and dreams and desires. But as I traveled around the world to 100 countries, I started going, holy shit, I've been seeing the same problems. What's underneath it? I began to see that there are these same six human needs that we all have, the same needs. We all have a need for certainty, that we can avoid pain and we can have some pleasure, some comfort. We all need uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We need variety or we feel dead inside. If you're totally certain, you're bored. If you have total variety, you're like freak out. And it's not a balance. It's learning which of these you need more as a person. Everyone's developed a different set of values in that area. Um, need of, the need for significance, to feel unique, special, important, the need to feel loved, the need to grow, and the need to contribute. Some people value certainty at the top of their list. That's their center of their target. 
I don't want to do anything unless I know it's going to work. I don't want to do anything unless it's the same. If you change anything, they freak out. If certainty is the number one thing on your list, everyone has the same needs, but if it's number one, I know how your life's going to be. I can predict the direction of your life and therefore the destination to some extent. If you're driven by love first, you want certainty too, but love is higher, you're going to behave very differently than if you're driven by significance. I have to be the one. Your experience in business was trying to be significant by making enough money and being successful enough that you would feel what you really want, which is that feeling of love, what you call, uh, uh, not what would you call it? Camaraderie. Camaraderie, thank you, camaraderie. So that feeling of, it's really love, it's a, it's a friendship, it's camaraderie, it's that component, that's what really drives you. Sure. And so you figure out how to organize your life where that's the driving force, and now look what you've done. You've flourished and everyone around you is flourishing. So I look to see which of those needs are the top two on your list because they control your life. Yep. The two that most people have, 90% of the planet, if you said, of all these needs, which one do you really focus on most day to day? Everybody wants love, but what do you focus on? Most people focus on being significant. We live in a Facebook world where people fake their life, put new filters, make it look different than it really is, tell stories that you know are totally full of it to make themselves look good. Because we live in this kind of false world where significance is more important than love. Right. And it separates us. And the other one that we see most often is certainty. People want to be certain before they can do something. You couldn't have started a business like you had if you were absolutely certain before you started. You can never build a business with that. You can never build a great relationship because if it's based on certainty, then everybody's got to stay the same and never change, which means you're never going to grow, which means you're going to be miserable. Right. So my metrics are, I want to find out what's driving you. And I want to see, is it healthy or unhealthy? You can have two people be driven by significance, though, and do it with a different set of rules. That's the second piece I measure. The beliefs or rules of how to fulfill that target. So Osama bin Laden, certainty driven, love driven, contribution driven, <laughs> significance driven, not hard to figure out. On a zero to 10, he was a 10 for significance. He was the, whatever, I'm making the number up, but he was like the 27th child of his father, 22nd child. Most people don't know that. Totally insignificant, not skilled, took his dad's money, went over to Afghanistan and suddenly, because he had money, he became significant. Mm. And he started, he wasn't even part of that movement at that stage. It shaped him. So what does he do? He's gonna figure out, his model of the world is, I'm significant if I destroy you, right? On that same day of 9-11, there were men and women in the fire department, police department, that were also driven by significance and contribution. And they went into that building knowing they're likely gonna die to save a stranger. Both people driven have a significant life. Mm. One is by taking life, one is by giving their own life. Mm. So once you understand the metrics, using your language, of what's driving you, and then the rules or beliefs of what does it take for you to feel loved, it's different for everybody. What does it take for you to feel certain? Some people need a billion dollars, some people just need to trust God. I'm really goal focused, I really am. If I have to get something done by five o'clock that day, I get it done by one o'clock. I don't wait to the deadline. Maybe I get up and do it first thing. I block my days off into 30 minute chunks and I get it done. Try it, it works. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter what you do. If you basically say, these are the five things I'm gonna nail today and I'm not gonna let anything get in the way, watch how productive you'll become. Watch how you'll achieve your goals. Watch how people will wanna work with you. Watch how they'll wanna be part of your world. People respect work but they really respect executional excellence. And above all, they love consistency. And above all that, they respect honesty. Even though it's really hard to be honest all the time, suck it up and do it. It'll serve you well your whole life.